uh, it's like our minds are wells of water, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to, you have to be able to fill your well in order mm -hmm. to draw from it. So if I go to a project and I haven't done my homework and, and just immersing myself in good design in whatever way that is an inspiration, then I can't pull anything out of it. Hey everybody, I'm here with Jorian Peterson from Made by Fell. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Juna. Oh, thanks for being on this interview. I've been a fan for a long time. I kind of told you that before the interview. I've been seeing your stuff all around and just love to uh, know how you're doing it and and everything. Just I'm just so curious. And I think my, my followers will be really curious as well and can learn a lot of things about being a, a creator and, and using art and selling art. I, I think that's going to be the focus today at this one. So thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm going to, for those that don't know you, I'm going to read a short bio about you, and then we'll get into the questions. Is that cool? That sounds great. After graduating from Utah State University with a degree in graphic design, Jorian and his wife, Tara, started Phil, a side hustle where they could just design what they felt inspired to design. Through the years, Phil grew from a small booth of local craft markets to a creative studio that designs for and sells wholesale products to national parks, ski resorts, museums, and boutiques across the country. Jorian's work is influenced by his travels and the great outdoors. He is constantly inspired and interrupted by his wife and three children. Jorian, thanks, thanks for being on uh, Detour Shirts. Oh, thank you for having me. This is great. Awesome, awesome. So, man, I've been, I've been wanting to do this interview for a while because we're both from, from Utah and I've been seeing all your stuff around here. And every time I go somewhere that your stuff's on there and I see the new things, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I love this art. It's, it, it speaks to me and I'm sure it speaks to a lot of other people here in, in Utah. So I wanted to ask you the first question is, uh, how did you get into the art business? And did you have a nine to five first and then do this on the side? What's kind of your story? Oh yeah, there was definitely a nine to five for a while. There were several nine to fives. Oh really? Um, okay. So I happened to marry an entrepreneur. So this this was all her. I'm not confident enough to to uh, <laughs> jump on to self employment on my own. So she uh, she definitely influenced that. But things were going well, and I enjoyed it so much. It's so fun to just design what you feel inspired to design, not what the client or the boss tells you you have to design. Mm -hmm. I get that. A, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. It's such a good feeling that I just wanted more of it. And we jumped on this roller coaster of ups and downs. <laughs> That's awesome. So when did it uh, when did it start? Uh, was it right after college? And uh, how did you get into like get into all the stores and all of that stuff? So I always did side projects for fun. Uh -huh. um, and then when I got married, we actually bought a screen press, a, okay. like a tabletop screen press uh -huh. DIY kit so we could print our own wedding invitations. Nice. We wanted something more than just a, a digital print, but we didn't have the budget for a letter press uh -huh. or a screen printed from a studio. So we just did it ourselves. And then okay. we started printing other people's invitations and business cards and, and, de and uh, designing those as well. And, got into, you know, we just want to make our own stuff, our own fun things to sell, not just uh, business cards anymore. So we decided to make a goal and, and set up for a, a craft market called okay. Salt and Honey. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were, at, I think it was like their second one ever was our first market. And if we didn't set that goal, we never would have made it because we, we were, as a designer, and my wife is so design-minded as well, we were just so stuck on the branding. Like we took a, over a year just working on mission statements and and purpose and even trying to think of like what kind of charity we could have on the side right. to donate to and brand logos and name and all this stuff. And one day she was like, we just have to make product. We just have to sell it. It doesn't matter if our brand is perfect. And that's how that. we actually got started back in 2015. Okay is when we officially registered as a business, but our first market wasn't until 2016. Okay. And I'll be honest, things didn't really go well at first. Our stuff was way too expensive. Some people people liked it, but they wouldn't buy it. Oh. And so we were kind of toning down and we had this big aha revelation moment where it was like, we need to stop 
just screen printing. Our whole thing was we only screen print. We oh. screen printed posters. We screen printed um, trivets, and we got these key light holders made out of like hand carved out of this really nice maple from a local wood shop that we just had them chop into blocks and cut a little circle into so we could put a tea light into. Uh -huh. And we screen printed on that and it was, <laughs> I thought it was beautiful, but it wasn't yeah. worth 30 the $30 that it costs to make. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one day we were like, you know, we have this last market coming up. Let's just call it after that. It was uh, Craft Lake City in August. So yep. a few months after our first market, we had done a few markets and like I said, it wasn't going well. And then a few days before the market, I had this idea, this, um, this just vision came to me, this inspiration for a collage, icon collage map of Utah. Right. That's and awesome. So I whipped that out as fast as I could, working through the night a few times. And I think I stayed up so late printing those the night before over the market that it was it was maybe like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And so I had wow. to get up in a few hours to go set up the market. Yeah. And the idea was not just this Utah map, but to print it digitally so it was cheaper and easier. Okay. And it sold so fast. Yeah. It, that, uh, that, that, that idea, that market, that saved our business. Yeah. I, I remember that. I remember home. seeing that all everywhere in Utah. That was yeah. like everywhere. Yeah. Well, I, that day I had to run back home for during lunch. Of, of the market while my wife was still there and print more, which I could do because they weren't screen printed. Yeah. So we actually screen printed and numbered 33 of them as a limited edition of screen print. Yeah. And then we had digital print open edition. Wow. And interestingly enough, we learned that most people didn't care. We had this, they were the same size and the same mm -hmm. price and people just didn't care if it was digital or hand printed and signed. Wow. And some people would be like, oh my gosh, this is limited edition of 33. I'm totally buying this, but not very many. Mm -hmm. So we really moved our business to be um, more digitally printed because it was cheaper and faster and easier. Mm -hmm. And our customers just didn't care. It, I cared, so it was hard. It was really <laughs> hard for both my wife and I to make that jump, but yeah. we did. And then that led us into stickers and that really took off. And that's still our main focus today. Wow, thanks for sharing that. I've always wondered and because I like you said, I, I saw that what you did, the that's so iconic that uh, the Utah icons and everything on there. Like, I've seen that everywhere and it made a big impression on me. I, that's probably the first thing I saw too of yours. And then I just started seeing all your stuff. I love the story because you you tested and found out like which way yeah. to go. And I think that's great. I think that I think that's what all kind of creatives have to do is kind of like, I love this, but what does the audience love? And then can I, right. can I pivot? That's so cool. All right. There, thanks there so much. There have been many things since then that I thought would be such a hit that I was so proud of that were an absolute flop. So yeah. you never know. Yeah. It's, you never know. You just got to test it. Yeah. And I think what you did was really smart too, because you found out that digital um, was the way to go for you, at least for your audience. And you were able to test faster with that. Cause if you had to test yeah. with screen screen print every time that, yeah, that would have been really hard, but yeah, yeah. so smart. Wow. Okay, great, great answer. I'm looking forward to these other questions here. So question number two is what are some of the biggest challenges of being a professional artist? Oh man, um, a couple that stand out are I mean, finances, it's, you know, mm. starving artist, right? And, mm -hmm. and going into college, I would hear that, you know, the way you can make it as an artist is a graphic designer, mm. which I think can be very true. Like you, if you have that nine to five job, unless you're foolish enough to jump into a, a passion project full time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's such a roller coaster. We yeah. get clients that will give us huge orders or huge freelance jobs. And then there's there's so much that I don't have time to do it all. It's just mm. I'm up all night and wow. working hard all through the day trying to get this done. Wow. And then there's times where there's just nothing to do. And by that, I mean, I always have things to do. I have a running list of things that I want to do for myself, mm -hmm. but they don't pay the bills. And they, you know, it's I design something hoping that one day it pays the bills. Yeah. Hoping yeah. that one day by the time we get it in the catalog, people will slowly pick up on it and then it'll pay so it's this roller coaster of huge ups and downs financially mm. feast and famine right yeah yeah that makes sense that's it 
I think that that's true for a lot of uh, artists, unless you, like you said, unless you go to the nine to five. I I asked that question because I recently quit my nine to five to do this full time. You. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So there, I did do the graphic artist route. I did the UX design route, but I feel like, and this is why I wanted to have you on and other people are, that are creative and doing it outside of the nine to five or maybe with a nine to five is because I think there's a big opportunity for, for designers. Oh, but, yeah. Um, and like both of us have found success in it, but I, I want to show other people that you can do this. You don't have to be stuck in a nine to five when you're creative and you, in, and you actually want to do something with that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, really cool. Really cool, man. Okay. Number three, uh, what is your biggest tip to someone wanting to become a professional artist? Can I share a couple? Yes. A couple yeah. Share as many. Mind. Yeah, please. So I have to credit my father-in-law who was an entrepreneur too. So my wife actually um, started young as an entrepreneur. Her dad is an entrepreneur. And so he he raised her by example to be innovative and risk-taking and creative in that way. Even when she was 14 years old, she started her very first business successfully. So wow. my father-in-law loaned her a thousand dollars and she bought a pressure washer. They lived in Houston. So she had a business where she would go around and pressure wash mold off of people's driveways. Wow. And within a month or so, she was able to pay him back the thousand dollars and just start making profit. Wow. Um, so anyway, his biggest tip that he gave to us when we started was you will get out of it what you put into it. Mm. And I'll say that's not even quite true because as entrepreneurs, you'll, you know, or you will find out that you put in, you don't quite get what you put into it. it you put in so much into it and then a little bit comes back <laughs> and then you put so much into it and you get a little bit. So you have to put in even more, mm -hmm. but if you just sit there, it's not going to do anything. You know, you can't just coast through entrepreneurship like you can a nine to five job. You really have to make smart decisions and work very hard. Um, I once heard, I, I can't quote who it's from. I, I heard Tad Carpenter speak and he quoted someone else. So man, I might have to look this up, but, um, he said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And that is absolutely true. Mm. It's not just based on hard work. There's a lot of luck in this industry, but the harder you work, the luckier you get, the more lucky breaks you'll get, the more someone will happen to discover you. That is that key client that will give you a big job or give you some sort of recognition or publicity. Yeah, I love those. That, those. Those two are really great. I think I think also with luck is that you're prepared because yes. you're working so hard that when the opportunity comes, you're ready for it. Whereas yeah. if, you, if you weren't working that hard, the opportunity comes in like, oh, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. think I can do this, right? Yeah. Can I do one more? Yes, yes, please. So another one, when I was just starting out, I I had still had the nine to five job. I went to Salt Lake Design Week to take a class uh -huh. during my lunch break. And they said, anyone looking to go self-employed, whether it's part-time or full-time, their biggest advice was to diversify your income. Mm -hmm. And that means like I was looking at just screen printing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Purely screen printed products. And not only was that a bad idea, <laughs> I needed to diversify my products, but I needed to to diversify my time. I needed to be able to do more uh, freelance design, not just selling at craft fairs. I needed to get a website and sell products there. I needed to start selling wholesale. Um, I So other things I've done to diversify to get more income streams is to, I have shirts available for Cotton Bureau. Like I don't mm -hmm. deal with my own shirts. I don't store shirts and ship them, but I have print on demand website that yes. will take care of that for me. And it's a very small income, but the more small in passive incomes you have, the more variety you have, the more successful or more potential for success you'll have. Yes, I love that. That That is so smart. I love the way that you talked about that. I, I think the same way. I, I always picture it like a table or a stool where you have different legs. And if one falls away, you still got the other ones. You're not like, you don't put all your eggs in one basket kind of yes. idea, right? Like, cause you never know, like if, something falls out and you, you may not get freelance for a while, but then the other ones can kind of help support and you're never just totally out. So yeah. I, I love that idea. So great. So smart. Question number four, you have a very distinct style and brand. Uh, is there a name for that style? And what would you say to someone that wants to find their own style and build a brand around that style? Any oh. advice? So my style is very minimalist mm -hmm. and I love it. it's, 
I think there there really are a lot of people out there um, that that do that. I definitely wasn't the first, and I'm not mm-hmm. the only to be like this. But kind of everything you do, if you do it, like I have had experiences that have shaped me and uh-huh. shaped me as an artist, as a designer, and so anything that I do kind of goes through a filter of a Jorian filter, you know? Okay. Yeah. So you can tell another minimalist designer to design a line art mousse and it will come out differently than mine will. Mm-hmm. But I, I studied a lot in Switzerland and in Scandinavia where it's all about that simplicity and nature. Oh, okay. um, and I just, I love minimalism in part because that's what I'm drawn to. Um, but also because that's what I'm limited to. Mm-hmm. I there's an illustrator that I love named Bob Shea. He's a children's okay. book author, but he's also a graphic designer. Okay. And I asked him for advice on illustrating once and he was like, "Well, you're a designer, so use your tools. You don't have to try and illustrate like Wayne Smith, who's this prolific illustrator, so highly detailed. He is a true artist." Um Bob was like, there's already an illustrator out there who illustrates just like Lane Smith. And his name is Lane Smith. So <laughs> you need to illustrate like Jorian Peterson. Nice. And I, so basically, I take the tools that I have, which I have a seven-year-old daughter. If you were to compare our actual pencil drawings and sketches next to each other, she, you might say she's better than me. I am <laughs> a terrible artist on paper <laughs> without the modern tools of uh, the, the pen tool and the shape tools on Illustrator, I would be nothing. <laughs> so um, I I really uh, have that to think. It's all about minimalism. It's so like I said, I don't I don't uh, illustrate minimally because just because that's what I love to do. That's kind of what I'm limited to do. So that's mm-hmm. my style. Cool. Very cool. Thanks for that. Um, how about? What do you say? How do, how does someone find their style? I, I guess you you found your style because that's what you're limited to. Is there a way, or have you talked to people who, like, because because I see this all the time on on my channel, like they they wanna they kind of wanna try everything. Yeah, it feels like they. I feel like it would be helpful if they they kind of stuck to their style and kind of built a brand around it. Do you, do yeah, you that makes sense. Um, so. I love Hans Christian Andersen. He's, okay. you know, the famous Danish author. Uh-huh. Um, he has this quote where he said, and I'm trying to remember it for sure. I am like water. Mm. Everything is reflected in me. Everything, everything is mirrored in me. Uh-huh. Um, basically, go out and experience the world. Okay. So he yes. tried to, he has an interesting story where he tried to write and be successful and he just fell flat. Nothing mm-hmm. was working out. But then he went on this study abroad to Italy, leaving Denmark for a while. And he just was so filled with these rich experiences that he came back and wrote a best selling book. Wow. Okay. And that's really when his success started. So the point is, you don't have to go to Italy like Hans. You don't have to go to Scandinavia or Switzerland like me, but yeah. get out there and have experiences, whether it's hiking in your local. Um, mountains or desert or wherever you live, but get out there, travel, be outside, go mm-hmm. to thrift shops or antique mm-hmm. stores. You just have to get out there and get experiences and then work. You have to yeah. try things. Yeah. Like like you said, maybe you don't need to try everything, but experience, experiment a bit until you can be like, oh, I kind of like that. And you just yeah. slowly move forward. Like I I have a style, but it's constantly evolving, just so slowly uh, that no one even recognizes it. If you were to go cool. back and see my very first works for Fell, it, it is quite different. You'd see the difference in what it was then and what it is now. And yeah. not only the difference, but the quality. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Because it, it sounds like your style evolves over time. Yeah. And, and then you kind of have to... Like you may not start off with a, a style of your own, but through your experiences and through working and drawing and whatever you're doing, sketching or maybe you're doing it digitally, whatever. But yeah, you, you're gonna find your style eventually because you you keep you keep doing it and you keep finding things that you love and maybe incorporating that and then you know yeah. that comes your style and then and like it doesn't stop there; it just keeps right. going. Right? Yeah. And and take a sketchbook like it was yeah, yeah, yeah. me like I can't draw very well. My sketchbook is basically like a uh, shorthand. You know, yeah. it's maybe I jot down ideas, a sketch yeah. of an idea, but and only I can tell that that's a cow. Or <laughs> but but I know what it is, and I can go yeah. back and do it better on the computer. So like 
I whenever we go camping or hiking, I take my sketchbook and nice. I'll stop and and you never know when inspiration is going to strike you. When yeah. we lived downtown in Salt Lake City, like we would go to City Creek Mall and stop in Anthropology or West Elm. Um, even we'd go to Ikea sometimes and I'd take a sketchbook because not that I want to copy anything anyone else has done, but there's so many beautiful things. And even those stores, if you're in a more urban environment that can inspire. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I do that too. I don't sketch, but when you said that, I was like, it's kind of like an art journal almost. Yes. It's like a it's like a journal, but with sketches and stuff. So it's it's kind of cool. I like to use my phone. So whenever I go out to the store, mm -hmm. I see a, a cool design or t-shirt or whatever. Could could be a mug, could be anything with artwork on it. And like quit. Yes. And, and a lot of times I, I've seen a lot of your stuff too. I'm like, this is also <laughs> take pictures of your stuff too. Oh, thanks. So, um, all right. Question number five. What product is your favorite to design and what product is your most popular product so i'm gonna answer the second part first while okay. i think about the first one <laughs> okay okay stickers it's all stickers are definitely our top most seller popular. okay um and so we've you know as we've found that out we started out with we did a craft market once and someone was like you guys should try try some stickers and so we did like three or four sticker designs but we had a uh -huh. ton of art prints and other stuff we had back then we had shirts and art prints and some things and the three or four sticker designs like outshined the rest wow. of our inventory like by double the amount wow. of profit it was crazy and they were they were randomly like yellowstone stickers they weren't even yeah yeah um related to utah because that's what i was working on stuff to pitch to yellowstone national park gift shops okay um so ever since then i was like okay i guess i need to put more time into stickers and <laughs> so then we got up to like almost 200 sticker designs Whoa. in our catalog and that's just taken over wow um and as far as a favorite goes that, that's tricky but i think i'm gonna have to say postcards oh nice they they make the least amount of money for us uh -huh. <laughs> they're really just a, i'm trying to remember my wife is so much better at the business stuff than me so there's mm -hmm. this term like what is it an, an upsell i think is what yeah yeah, yeah upsell like, we don't really make much money off of postcards but it's this nice little add-on thing uh -huh. for clients who are already buying our prints or our stickers that they can be like yeah let's get a few postcards too so it, it makes a lot of clients happy that we have them okay but, uh, other than that it's not really worth our time financially but yeah. one of the reasons we started our business at least that we started this business is because we love to travel that's mm. a huge influence for us and mm -hmm. i collect postcards okay and, after coming back from Europe one time, like Switzerland has such rich illustrated postcards of all kinds, these, these older ones that are very impressionistic to ranging to modern ones that are so minimal and geometric and they're so beautiful. And so we came back with a stack of postcards and we we're like, we love Utah, Utah. Like we're proud to be from Utah. Let's, let's go get some Utah postcards. And they didn't have oh. like, anything that wasn't just a like an old photograph yeah it was yeah. all photographic there were hardly we couldn't find any illustrated postcards i'm sure there were some because we didn't look in every store in the state but we're like let's make our own and so we yeah. illustrate postcards because i'm passionate about postcards and i love how you can just you're limited to space and scale so mm -hmm. you can't put it you're forced to not be able to put a lot on there you have to put this symbolic meaning to it it's it's a fun puzzle for me really nice Wow, that's cool. And I like that you kind of found the hole in the market where there wasn't anything. And so you designed for it. And that's really cool. So cool. Uh, thanks for sharing those. Those are great, great uh, products, by the way. Love, I love your stickers and postcards. So Thank you. it makes a lot of sense. Um, number six, how do you come up with new ideas and what inspires you? I think you touched on that a little bit, but go ahead again. All right. Uh, let me get my soapbox out here. Um, <laughs> so... Travel is huge. Just getting outside of your comfort zone really is big. Um, but I'm going to say the number one thing that inspires me is being outside. Okay. Um, so Makes there's sense. some stats that I've read up on that I'm I'm no I'm not I'm not great at memory for numbers is why I'm in the art world. Mm -hmm. But so there's this thing called negative air ions. Have you ever heard of this? No. Tell us so, more about it. Yeah. These things are in the air. They're little tiny mo microscopic molecules in the air. And they have been uh, 
proven in studies to boost your mental capacity and creativity and just what? your thinking in general. And wow. so you go, they, they, they're in water, mostly, 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 mainly. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so they're mostly in water. And so if you go to a stream, a river, oh. a waterfall, but even something as little as a little creek, they're, these things are in the air. So if you go to a waterfall, there could be as many as 100,000 negative air ions in a wow. few cubic feet. Okay. If you go to uh, your cubicle in an indoor air conditioned office, there's maybe a hundred, less than a hundred oh. and oh, no. every few cubic feet. Mm -hmm. So if you get outside, especially into areas that have water, if there's a park that has a stream, if, I'm not saying you have to go hiking in the mountains to get to this, but if there's a park with a stream, then you can get a little boost of creativity without even realizing it. Wow. And it's not just the negative air ions by water, it's fresh air, it's sunshine. There's a lot of studies done on the Japanese tree bathing or forest bathing, if you've heard of that. Yeah. Just getting out into nature, even if it's an urban park, can really boost your creativity. And so every time I'm stuck, I, I like, I'm like, okay, it's time to step out into my backyard. You know, I, I can't just go camping all the time either, but mm -hmm. you just got to get outside, take a walk around your block, and I come back refreshed. And so really for me, I find that I don't go out and find inspiration. The thing that I need to do is clear my mind and clear my life in a way that I can make room for inspiration to come to me. Wow. That's when I'm most successful. It has nothing to do with me. It's when, when inspiration visits, that's when it's good. It's all about the outside. It's all about outside forces. You know, if God inspires me, I, I'm nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I never even heard of that. I, I can't believe I've been in this business for that long. It inspires me to go outside more now. now. Now I have a real good excuse to go visit a waterfall or a stream yeah. or go to the park or like let's go we got to do this that's it's, right it's for the business we gotta, take a yeah. sketchbook when you go <laughs> oh that's true yeah take a sketchbook too nice kind of incorporate all, everything we talked about that's so cool thanks for sharing that all right i'm going to change it a little bit uh on this next this next uh, question here what are your thoughts on ai art yes ai very yes very interesting topic yeah so Let me get your thoughts since you're like a, you're a designer designer that does it all yourself so yeah uh ai terrifies me uh, i'm really? scared i feel like if i'm not there yet i'm gonna start losing jobs because of ai oh and ai could um like like i've touched on i'm not that great of a designer i feel like mm -hmm. i have a bit quite a bit of imposter syndrome and when people <laughs> buy my work i'm like oh i fooled another person into thinking i'm an <laughs> artist can't believe I pulled the wool over so many people's eyes. Um, and so I feel a very small amount of confidence in my work mm -hmm. and in my abilities. And AI is so much more powerful and probably better than me and faster and cheaper. So mm. like, why would someone not go with AI when they could? Why would they choose me over AI? So it's, it's a little scary. It's daunting mm -hmm. to worry about my future income. But I think AI is such a cool innovation too. Like I, I see it from the other side. Mm. Like I have a, a brother-in-law who's designing this amazing game app mm -hmm. that he's taken so long on and he's using AI for the artwork and doing such an amazing job. Like wow. he's, he can do design, he can do artwork, but the amount that he has to produce and then the time constraints he has AI is such a good fit for him and he couldn't afford to pay an illustrator or a designer mm -hmm. to do all this work as a small startup app. Mm -hmm. So it's doing amazing things for a lot of people, but it terrifies me. So okay. there's balance. I, I don't like it. Like in some ways I wish it would just go away forever so I could have more job security. But right. I understand that the other point of view is that other people really benefit from it. And that's good. That's good for other people. So it's, mm -hmm. it's important to, be okay with other people's views too. Yeah. I think you share the, I think what you're saying is what most artists feel. Um, but I was interested to ask you this question because I feel like looking at your stuff, like you're pretty safe because you built a brand. Like this is made by Fell. You can say like, you know, so <laughs> that's why I was like, maybe it doesn't affect you at all because like 
AI can do similar, but it's not made by Phil. Like you're, you right. got your brand done, you know? So that's what I was thinking anyway. Well, like, maybe we need to have an offshoot called AI generated by Phil. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, how important is going to shows and festivals to sell your artwork? I knew you did that in the very beginning. You still do yeah. that kind of stuff now? So at the beginning, it was everything. We, yeah. If you're not visible, no one will buy your work. Like, mm -hmm. If you're not out there, no one will know you exist. So going to festivals and shows was everything for us. We had an on, we got an online shop, but no one knew that existed, right? Mm -hmm. No one knew to go there. So you didn't have a following yet. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the festivals and shows with a bunch of business cards. And even that, especially back then, even if someone didn't buy anything, if they just took a business card, we'd do a little dance. It was exciting. It was thrilling. <laughs> and so over the years, we grew a little bit of an audience. We have some recognition. We get more random people across the country finding us on Google search engine. Um, but we've slowly paired scaled back over time as we've had more kids it gets, mm. and we live in Heber. So it's a little further away from most of them now. Mm -hmm. So we still did it for a while. We'd force it. Um, and we just decided recently, actually last year that we're kind of done for now. Yeah. Uh, we're taking a, a break. Maybe it might be a permanent break. I don't know. Basically yeah. we might decide in a few years that we're like, Hey, let's try that show again. Let's go back just mm -hmm. for fun. But really I have so much work of other kinds that, when I'd go to a show, it really put us behind. And mm. as fun as the shows were, it was hard. It's so draining. And mm -hmm. it always it's not just the time that you spend at the show away from work, but it takes prep work to get ready for the show, mm -hmm. then being there and then setting taking down and putting everything back away. It really um, hits pause on the rest of my work schedule for a while. And so we just kind of are we're done for now we did one last at christmas market mm -hmm. last year and yeah we're, I saw we're done for a while and we might feel the ramifications of not having a little bit of those sales uh -huh. at the show and there's always people that discover you for freelance work or wholesale orders at shows but we just have so much that it was too so much going on it was too overwhelming to do shows yeah so to recap, because I just rambled again. <laughs> no, you're fine. At the beginning, they were vital. That's why we're where we are is because of shows. Mm -hmm. But now we have so much else going on that it's not something we have time for. Although mm -hmm. the one thing we do is we still do trade shows. Okay. So we go to, and we've scaled back on that even. So we go to one, at least one a year, and every once in a while we'll do two or three a year. Nice. Is there a big one that you go to? What's the big one? Um, we've been to a lot. The, we really liked um vegas market oh yes we liked um new york now san francisco now wow. and the public lands alliance okay so it's a few, yeah. and then oh if it, it depends on the industry you're in but yeah. where we do a lot of gift shop stuff and custom mm -hmm. the las vegas souvenir show is really good okay nice that's really cool good to hear thanks for sharing those um yeah i think you're i think you're right on because like like you said before how you had to evolve with the silk screen and the, the, the prints to digital. Um, you also have to evolve like where your business is going. Is it, does it take up too much time now to go to the shows and now do this? So you have to, I think business, creative business is going to always this flow of yeah. like, okay, now we got to pivot and we got to pivot right? here and we do this. Yeah. <laughs> and one day stickers are going to be gone, right? There's yeah. maybe not gone for good, but they're going to be, um, kind of irrelevant and not the fad, but not mm -hmm. the trend anymore. And that's going to be a huge chunk of my income. I've got to yeah. start watching what are the next trends so I can yeah. slowly evolve the stickers phase out one day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're always got to be on the lookout. And so it's not autopilot all the time. You almost have to have to look at the numbers and figure out what's the best, best route. And it may not be the best, like you do it and then like find out that, okay, now we got to pivot back or something. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Thanks for sharing that. Next one is, I'm curious, are there any books, podcasts, conferences, or YouTubers that you think are valuable for someone wanting to become a professional artist? What do you listen to or watch? Nice. Um, let's see. There, there's so many things out there. There's so many things that even I haven't had time or to do or even know about. So some of the first things that come to mind are just, uh, I would get on websites like Dribble or Behance, mm -hmm. um, Design Inspiration. <laughs> Pinterest, just immerse yourself in design and mm -hmm. what other people are doing. And um, there's this book. So here's another one to interrupt myself. There's a book 
by Alan Peters. Okay. There's a, this fantastic graphic designer. Um, oh man, this is embarrassing. I'm forgetting what it's called. It's about logos. Yeah. Okay. I'll it. find it. I'll put it in the, I'll put it in here. So that one is amazing. And one thing he says in his book, and I think he says it on social media too, is if everyone is looking at the same stuff. So if everyone is just looking on Behance and Dribble though, as much mm -hmm. as I say, go on there. Uh -huh. If that's all everyone's doing, then everything's going to start looking the same. Mm -hmm. We're only pulling inspiration from each other. Mm -hmm. And so he's a big advocate for going to antique stores and mm -hmm. other places. Like, look at old stuff, too. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you have to design old stuff, but you can pull this inspiration a little. You can glean from antiques and really help your work become unique, become your own. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think websites are important. Going out into the world and looking at designs that are existing are really important. Um, nature, there's so much to be mm -hmm. found in nature, like I said, but as far as other stuff goes, and I just, I love looking at other people from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can find designers from other countries, they have their own flair sometimes, which is really good. It's just good to diversify what you look at. Mm -hmm. In short, it's like our minds are wells of water, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to, you have to be able to fill your well in mm -hmm. order to draw from it. So if I go to a project and I haven't done my homework and in, in just immersing myself in good design in whatever way that is an in inspiration, then I can't pull anything out of it. Um, I'm trying to think podcast. So I love 99% Invisible. Oh, okay. If you haven't heard of that, it's not necessarily uh -huh. graphic design. Some some episodes touch on graphic design, but it's just this really cool, subtle design podcast that talks about things that you wouldn't have really thought about otherwise and goes into the history of that particular design. And it's okay. That sounds cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks so much for sharing with that. Uh, sharing with us those things. Oh, there's this really cool YouTuber called Detour Shirts. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I, I, I've heard of him. Oh, yeah. You'd <laughs> yeah. like him, I think. Yeah, I think him and I would get along really, really well. <laughs> um, great. Uh, anything? So one of the, I got two more questions. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this one, but uh, I would, I, I'm going to ask it anyway. Anything new you're working on that you can share? Oh, this is always tricky because yeah, there's things that I'm like, I don't know if they'd really mind. Or not, and I don't know if they'd ever see. Oh this. yeah, the freelance. You mean for for, for the clients. companies that you're working on? Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll just say this a little more generically. There are okay. a handful of um, national parks that I'm working on. Nice. Some merchandise for. Okay. And, and to clarify, like I don't. Sometimes I do freelance design for the National Park Service or entities, uh -huh. you know, specific sites within the National Park Service. Uh -huh. But then most of what I do for national parks is with the park partner. So okay. like when I work for, when I do stickers and things for Zion National Park, uh -huh. it's, I'm really working for the Zion Forever Project, which is who oh. runs the bookshop and okay. they're the nonprofit organization that donates their proceeds to the park to support programs and build buildings. And that's so cool. Anyway, so I'm working on several uh, things for park partners within various national parks right now. That, okay. And that's a long process. So that could be a while before it comes out. Okay. But um, right now, let me think. For, I can obviously tell you about things that I'm doing for myself. Yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Um, so I talked about my Utah map. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, iconic. I did this. It's funny because as I told you, I had like this inspiration, this vision that kind of uh -huh. hit me one day. And I actually saw this map in my mind. It was wow. like That's divine amazing. intervention. Yeah. Um, and I went home and... I still had this image in my mind, very faint and fuzzy, but I could kind of like draw back on it of what I saw. Uh -huh. And what I ended up designing is way more detailed. I just kind of started throwing things in there and putting uh -huh. together this map, but it was so much more detailed with ma many more icons than what I saw. Uh -huh. And um, so, but it's what I could do. It's what I did. It worked for years. But then one day, years later, I was like, I, I want to go back and do what I initially saw, a much more simplified, refined map. Okay. With much fewer icons. And I actually did that for Craft Lake City a couple of years ago. Oh, nice. Um, yes, on yes. my website, it's called the Symbolic Utah sticker. Okay. I'll put it on here right here so everybody can see oh, it. Oh, awesome. And so what I'm working on right now is I want to go through and 
redo every state in that way. I started Whoa. doing some of the states in the more detailed way, but it takes so long. And I just, yeah. I don't have the time between having kids and trying yeah. to the, like do work that pays to pay the bills. Like yes. it, it didn't warrant the time and to do all 50 states in that way. But uh-huh. now I'm starting to do it in this more simplified way with more Love meaningful that. symbols. Oh, sweet. And so hopefully, you know, I, I put the kids to bed and can work on this a little little by little. I can passion project. Yeah. It's a nice. passion project on the side of the, the main passion project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll get all 50 states out sometime. It still is gonna take me a long time. But that's cool. Maybe we should put in the comments. Um, maybe this will help. Uh, put in the comments what state you're from. Yeah. And then we'll we'll see how many you can look back and see like perfect. And uh, do you just thinking doing states? I, I know I got a lot of followers from different countries too. So oh yeah. I um I I would love to do other countries too. I yeah. just I need to do the states first. People have yeah. been asking. Asking yeah. very patiently, sure. sometimes <laughs> impatiently for years about their states. So I've made yeah. promises I gotta do those first. Okay. So you have you probably have a priority list of which states. Are you gonna release them all out at the same time or are you gonna probably. Like release them? okay yeah okay. so it might be a while but yeah okay then, yeah because uh, you don't want people to be like hey where's mine yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and when it takes yeah. me so long to do each one that yeah. you get constantly uh harassed about uh, people's states because well, your stuff is so good i think that's why because they saw the utah one and like oh, i want one so yeah. now as far as other countries i do have several country maps um oh cool on oh. cricket so cricket hired us to put up a lot of content on their website Okay. So it's not like you can buy a sticker or a shirt from it, but you can buy that country map and make your own shirt through. Or download it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing those. Those are ex- that's exciting. And does does the um does the park stuff uh, end up on your website or is it just sold at the park? No. When we do stuff for the parks, it's exclusively for them, the so park. we don't okay. even sell it. So you have to go to the parks to go find his stuff. Yeah. And you get yeah, and go, like go I said, visit. sometimes it takes a long time. Like we've been pitching to Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park for years. Mm-hmm. Our delicate arch pin is one of our most popular items. Yes. And so we like would send them physical samples and never hear back because they get so many people pitching to them. But mm-hmm. after six, seven years, we finally got in just this wow. spring. So wow. I'm excited for you. That's so cool. That's big for those that don't know Utah. That's a big deal. <laughs> really big deal so um well, that's why a lot of people come and visit utah actually so that's really cool uh, last one where's the best place to connect with you and see what you're doing um instagram i we are not great at social media it's not our focus which is why we're terrible at our retail sales we have mm-hmm. such a bigger focus on freelance and wholesale mm-hmm. um so because we just don't post to social media we don't take the yeah. time i know like it's so, oh. such hard work people who do it well Mm-hmm. like you i know how much work goes into that and it's just not something i'm willing to sacrifice right now yeah so and we don't have TikTok or twitter or all, all the things we just have the one and we don't even post to it very often but we are live and on it i promise nice so if anyone wants to reach out they can dm on instagram or we have a, on our website our email okay your contact cool very cool well that's it uh, thanks so much for the interview. This is great. Um, I'm going to put again uh, in in here. So we already have your website uh, made by Phil over here and then this way, <laughs> your Instagram. So both both of them are, are down there if you want to go visit. Uh, thanks so much for being on this interview, man. Uh, oh, for sharing you, everything. It's an honor. It's, it's really been admire a pleasure. your work. You're, you're a great oh. artist too. Wow. Thanks so much. I, and feelings mutual. I, I, every time I go to the store and see one of your stuff, I'm like, there it is again. Love it. This is so cool. Look, he came up with some new stuff. And so I'm, I'm a huge fan to it. And I've been to the, um, where we do the, uh, what is that? The Christmas festival too. And oh, it's all your yeah. work in the, in the hut and everything, bought a few stickers and pins. It's amazing work. If you guys haven't seen his website, just check it out. Um, love the simplicity and the colors and just you i can tell you really thought through it and like it's not just it's not just a quick thing it's like i can tell as an artist like this this took some time simple is hard and to make simple <laughs> look simple look nice it, it's oh. I, yeah yeah i, I think I, I gravitate to that too so thanks so much man um it's been a great interview uh have a good one can't wait to see your new stuff man Thanks. You too. Can't wait to see what you're coming out with now. (laughs) All right. Thanks so much, man. See ya. Bye. Bye.